and we must come up with a policy in which there is no criminalization, but at the same time, one in which you don't know, have people walking in the street and you get Bobby with a big head. You know, I have none in my administration. I'm sorry. What's a big okay? head? Sir? You don't know what a big head is. <laughs> walking like. He doesn't know what a big head is. I'm trying to figure out that. I, you, you're very convinced that uh, tax uh, by consumption is really the way to really uh, get maximum benefit for the government's yes. dollar. But and that's let, proven. Mm -hmm. Let me, though, speak as a musician, as an artist, mm -hmm. and I want to really emphasize the development of the arts. I know you have a capable yes. minister, Juan Chet Green, who's yes. going to manage that portfolio. But in terms of uh, eliminating some measure of taxing, taxation for the importation of these instruments, we have right now uh, a focus on steel pan, but we are not yet to be able to uh, secure the next generation of horn players sure. within our nation to have our carnival or our arts going on. How do we make accessible to the children that would want to gravitate to these instruments, not having to just look at it on YouTube and aspire, but hold it in their hands? You know, our cabinet operates by consensus. But I think this is such an excellent recommendation that I'm going to give you a public commitment that we will take off the duty off of those um, instruments. I believe... I'll have to shake your hand for that. <laughs> <laughs> I believe... In fact, I tell you this much. As the finance minister, I'll do it administratively. If there's anyone who is bringing in instruments in this country to assist with the development of uh, music, I will personally, as a finance minister, waive the duty. Not for sale. Not, Not for sale. Selling. Not for sale. Yeah. And, you know, when you look at the evolution of burning flames and so on, started many years ago, literally as a child ban, I would like to see a few of those. Right. So I think we have to make it easier for them to access the instruments. And in addition, I think um, we, 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 we need to identify these individuals and form them into groups, form them into bands. In fact, I'm also going to give a public challenge that... I'm willing to even assist in raising funds for the creation of one such, maybe let's say a teenage band for that matter. So if maybe four or five youngsters who have the skills, who can play instruments, and they're willing to form themselves into a band, as a prime minister of this country, I will help them to raise the funds to buy the instruments. And you know you're at the right place, right? Yeah. You're at ABS. <laughs> so we might just do a television show. And Very good. And it's Friday. The Prime Minister. Well, I'll tell you what. Why, why, yeah, invite them. Um, yes. In, in we can do some addition yeah. here. But, but, yeah. sir, I, but I mean, I'm not saying no yeah. commitment there. I mean, yeah. because going back to the ministry you spoke about, um, Ministry of, um, of Culture, mm -hmm. Carnival, Sports, Trade, and, and there's no coincidence that it was actually structured in that way. Because the whole idea is to create an export industry, utilizing our arts, our music, you know, I mean, to, to, to export them. I mean, I would like to see a facility, for instance, I'm in place, and I've spoken to the Minister of, um, of um, Carnival and, and Culture, in which we can assist our artists after Carnival to help them to ply the trade throughout the Caribbean, maybe North America. Mm -hmm. Probably you can have a creme de la creme after Carnival. You take the, the top picks and send them on a tour, let them mm -hmm. spread the music, mm -hmm. let them get further experience, right. to give them some kind of support as well in the development of their music. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, those are things that we will definitely want to do and to export the service. So mm -hmm. again, the ministry itself is structured in such a way in which we can literally export our talent, I mean, our sport, I mean, our music, I mean, everything, our culture. What do you do for relaxation, sir? <laughs> Ah, well, the after numbers. the last 90 <laughs> days, want to send you on a spot, 100 you? days, <laughs> <laughs> I've been um, working uh, very hard. And um, as you know, um, uh, my wife and I, we have a two and a half year old um, son as well, who takes up a bit of our time. And um, uh, within recent times, the last week or two, I've started a little soccer. So I imagine you'll find me in a soccer field um, as often as I'm here on a Saturday morning in Friesville. Mm -hmm. Uh, again, to keep healthy, and um, at the same time, it's a form of recreation. Uh, but I have to admit, um, within the last 100 days, um, uh, recreation has not been a priority. <laughs> Speak to the people of Antigua and Barbuda, because you notice we have scrubbed most of the things that we sure. had to do this morning, because we love your company, we, and we know that they uh, want to hear more from you. So uh, th there's some um, things that are happening out there. It's imperative that you remind them that everything cannot be done overnight, especially the unemployed. You're absolutely right, um, Dave. And again, the 
government is, is in such a precarious position that it cannot be an employer of first resort. So individuals who are unemployed, they have to continue to make themselves available for work within the private sector. We are creating the enabling environment for growth. And I have to tell you too that um, we have actually seen an increase in growth and increase in revenues compared to last year, the same period, the last 100 days of our administration compared to the same period last year. So things are improving incrementally already. And we are actually in the, in, 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 in the slow, let's say the slow half for that matter, in which you know, you'd see a reduction ordinarily in revenues. And we have actually seen an increase, which has shown very clearly that we are managing the country's resources properly. Even our tax collection, the ABSD, for instance, has increased by about um, $15 million. Uh, I know there's some who felt that it would have actually um, reduced because we had given some relief to individuals who had arrears, and we continue to give them arrears, uh, arrears relief. I mean, up to yesterday, there's a particular hotelier who owes us about uh, three point something million, and we just struck a deal with them in which we will give them some uh, relief on the um, pen penalties and the arrears, arrears penalties and the um, other charges, and to give them repayment terms that are not onerous. So those initiatives have actually helped us to increase the cash flows. Now, in so far as employment is concerned, I want to assure all our people that there will be opportunities for everyone. There has to be some forbearance. At the same time, there are many things that are happening for the country. The investment climate is extremely good. 2015 will be a very strong year for Antigua and Barbuda as a number of these projects come in stream. And the housing project will start in earnest very shortly. We have started a process of land development, so we will have a few hundred jobs there. I spoke about the reformation at CBH and solid waste, which will also create a few more hundred jobs. So incrementally, we will put you, the people of Antigua and Barbuda, back to work. I also want to encourage our local businessmen to exploit the various opportunities that are available. The concessions that we make available to expatriates are also available to locals. And I believe that the local business community could do better in terms of additional investments. So we'd want to encourage you to invest more, to create more jobs, to put our people, the people of Antigua and Barbuda back to work. And in essence, for us to continue to work harmoniously, to understand that we have a very exciting vision to transform Antigua and Barbuda into an economic powerhouse, for you to understand that the work has already started and that we have to remain focused, we have to remain true to our vision to continue to work towards it and I can assure you that in the medium term this country will be transformed into an economic powerhouse in which the people of Antigua and Barbuda will enjoy living standards better, better than any. A pleasure. Mr. Prime Minister, we're going to wrap it up this morning, but we want to say how delightful we were to have you with us. A pleasure. And indeed, the reason why we're so delightful is because you're brazen, you're bold. <laughs> And uh, you say these things <laughs> and you stick to them. Yes. You know, it's, uh, the fact is that they, we know the difficulties that the world experiences. And, and in Antigua and Barbuda, we're not isolated from sure. that. So we want to wish you and the, the men and women who are working in the Antigua and Barbuda Labour Party new administration the best of everything. Because if you succeed, Antigua and Barbuda succeed. That's right. Well, this is what progressive, I have to say. Progressive destiny with labor. <laughs> that's, that's a new tagline. <laughs> this is what I have to say finally before we go. I heard a, a great man on television say that anyone can steer the ship, but it takes a great leader to chart the course. Thank you. And uh, a country is as good as its, its leader. leadership. True. And we, the people of Antigua and Barbuda, we've put trust in you and your administration. And as the head, it is your job to make sure that Antigua and Barbuda is a successful nation. And, and that's a very important point you just raised, um, Brisella. And, and that's one of the things that, you know, has helped to drive me, even as the leader of this country, the kind of trust that the people of Antigua and Barbuda have actually reposed in myself as a leader of this country and certainly in my team as a whole. I mean, when you look at the results of the 2014 elections, I mean, the victory, the victory was an overwhelming one. And the trust that they actually place in me as an individual, as someone who never governed a country, even the polls indicated that they, they I mean, the majority of the people of Antigua and Barbuda felt I would have been a better leader than Spencer. I mean, 
that was really unprecedented because generally, whenever you have a challenger challenging an incumbent prime minister, a challenger who has never been prime minister, it is very difficult to poll ahead of an incumbent prime minister. And when I looked at the, the, the trust that the people repose in me and the fact that they believed what I said, I just want to indicate here that I will never, ever betray your trust, that I recognize that you have placed an enormous responsibility on my shoulders. I can assure you that I am up to the task and that everything that I do will be in the interest of the masses, not based on any interest group, any individual, any friendship, but based exclusively on the empowerment of the people. I, I want to thank you, Prime Minister, for the time this morning, but for also seeing an opportunity to help the youths or the next generation in terms of development of the arts. When I shook your hand, it was not just an opportunity to shake, but it was really <laughs> giving them privilege that I got. I was able to gravitate to an instrument and use it to build a career from it that now has me actually on the television. And I see in the nation that we have uh, been restricting some children from that privilege, and I'm glad to know that you have seen the point to be able to give them and a it better will access. Be my budget statement. Yes. And I will indeed so, shake my head when I hear it. We'll, we'll remind you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm glad that you see to give them the privilege. So we thank you for and, that. And in the event it is inadvertently left out, I will give you a public apology. No problem. I appreciate it. <laughs> Grateful for your time and all the best to you for the balance of the day Certainly and with your administration throughout the years. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Prime Minister, thank you very much. Thank you, dear. Pleasure. Pleasure. <laughs> all right, you, thank you. That will do it for us here on Good Morning Antigua Barbuda, uh, where the Prime Minister is concerned. Stay tuned. It's Entertainment Friday. We've got so much more, and if you missed this interview, you can always go to www.absatvradio.com. That is www.absatvradio.com. Don't go anywhere. Keep sipping your coffee, drinking your bush tea. And remember, <laughs> we all play a part in making Antigua and Bacom. Don't go anywhere. Keep sipping your coffee drinking your bush tea and remember <laughs> we all play a part in making antigua and barbuda a productive nation we'll be right back. who oh yes <laughs>